Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time out to tune in today. Um, here we've got uh, Portland artist for Teresa. And as you all know, Teresa Rayford is running for Portland mayor this May 19th. Uh, ballots are due on May 19th, or if you want to mail them in, it would be May 14th. So I'd like to introduce to you Teresa Rayford, who <laughs> has uh, hi, who has been um, a strong community voice, uh, community activist, and organizer in Portland for the past ten years, really working tirelessly to make sure that we hold our leaders accountable and that we see change at the top level. So we're so honored to have her here with us today. And I would also like to introduce you to Amenta Abioto, who um, is an amazing Portland musician whose live performances are just um, out of this world. So if you ever get another opportunity to see her live once this is all over, I definitely recommend that. Um, she has one studio album and she's working on her next one. And we are um, so honored to have her grace us today with her soulful presence. Uh, we also have Andrew from um, Fingers Crossed Interpreting for our hard of hearing friends. Uh, and I'm your host, Anna. So hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having us again. And thank you, Aminta, for being here. I don't know if you remember, but we met a couple of years ago on Mother's Day when you and your mom came to my church at Bethel. And it was Dear Mama's Day for me. <laughs> yes, I remember. I remember. Yes. Yeah. Oh, how interesting to just meet again on Mother's Day. Oh, my goodness. You know what I'm saying? And in this space, because at that time, um, Bethel AME, we had, there was so much going on because we had the Charleston murders and all this just other stuff that happened that year. Mm -hmm. So when we all came together, the church had asked me to come and do a Mother's Day speech. But what I did was I brought in some of my non-binary and some of my fr trans friends in there. And I was like, nope, I'm making space for them in this church. And if you don't accept all of us, then you can't accept any of us. I'm not going to take the space. And so um, that was when I met Irene Kalanji because her son, Christopher Kalanji, had been murdered January of that year. And I never had heard his name before or knew even that that had happened to him. So just having that that event to honor uh, moms who had been subjected to, you know, incarceration, just all different things, losing their children, the violence. I wanted to honor them. And when community came together, it seemed like it was a, a fusion of even more like it just it was some dynamite that day. And so I was just honored because your mom was there. I remember I was just like, oh, my God, like we got space. It was amazing. It was yes. amazing. I was, I still remember it. And I remember meeting you and just was like, wow, this woman is so powerful. <laughs> like, and just what you're doing now, like, I'm just so happy to see, like, what you're doing. Like, this is so <laughs> exciting. Like, it's monumental. And um, yeah. so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for always doing what you do. Like, it's amazing. You're amazing. Well, thank you. I'm inspired by your generation and the courage you have. I want to do what I can to make it worth it mm -hmm. so that when it's time for y'all to lead, it's not the resistance that we're receiving right now. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an, 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 you know, some stability for reconstruction. So mm -hmm. thank you for being on the front line of keeping people motivated and inspired using your art to make a difference. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of your art, we'd love to have you go ahead and start. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm gonna get it real set up real quick, make sure everything is sounding okay. Oh, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. 
It might sound a little janky, but y'all can hear me okay, right? No, we couldn't hear you actually. You can hear me? Okay, can you hear me? You can hear me now. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Okay, can you hear me now? Can y'all hear? Yeah, um, okay. I would say that the music is a little low. Okay, what now? The music is a little low. It's a little low? Okay, let me try to cut it up. Yeah, that's what I was saying when I um, had myself on accidental mute. I, uh, I like, I'm tr the, the sound might be a little distorted, but... Um, Okay, cool. I'm a, I'm gonna cut it up here. Okay, and then we're gonna go off screen so you can um have your time. Okay. But um, I'll stay on just a little bit just to give you feedback about the sound. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How's the sound now? It's a, it's a little low, maybe a little. Can y'all hear better? Is it better? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's try. Let me try something else. This was my fear. This was my fear. This was definitely my fear. I was like, that I sounded perfect. No sound. But um, hold on. See, I don't even know. But you know what? I'ma just do it. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna just try a little acapella. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Let me know when you're ready and we'll go ahead. Y'all hear me now? Yes. It's better? Okay, good. Of the ocean, 
watch over me. Please don't dream it, no tsunami. Oh, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait in the water, children. to play that song a lot um and i kind of just put my own interpretation with it adding spirit like uh traditional african spiritual and um santeria um with yemaya um yeah so let me go ahead and try for the next song i really don't even know what i'm gonna do because uh, like what i do is like electronic but i'm just gonna try and improvise i guess um let me try to let me see what i can do real quick because i wanna i wanna make it work but like i said i don't do 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 Mm. Let's see. Uh oh. Okay. Okay, let's try to troubleshoot. I'm going to try to troubleshoot and see. Can y'all hear that? Can you hear that correctly? Uh, Ty? Okay, there we go. I see you now. Okay. We can hear that. Okay, cool. You hear that? Okay, cool. I'm going to try playing some music. Ha 
This technology is so difficult for yeah. all of us because it's so new. Yeah, we totally understand. Yeah. Um, if there's anything you'd like to sing a cappella, we'd love to hear. Um, otherwise, we could just invite Teresa back on. Yeah, let me. Uh... Oh. oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me see. Let me see. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here like I'm right here. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah. Let me Junior. Junior. Oh, you see him? <laughs> Junior. Oh, and the 
Yes, yeah, I just made that up on this little ukulele, okay? So I was just trying. I'm trying my best here. Um, and I will do one more song. I'm gonna just do try Kooji Chakalia. Um, yeah, when I play on my little. <laughs> Self-determination, 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 I understand what a hard road you've been on. I understand what a hard life you're living. I understand what a hard road you've been on. I understand what a hard life you're living. Oh, kuji chakulia, kuji chakulia, self determination, self determination. Grew to the right, grew to the right, grew to the right, grew to the slide to your left, slide to your left, slide to your left, slide. Grew to your right, grew to your right, grew to your right, grew. Slide to your left, slide to your left, slide to your left, slide to your left. Now shake it on to the back now. Shake it on to the back and groove to the right, groove to the right now. Shake it on to the back now, shake it on to the back now, groove. Ay, kuji chakulia, kuji chakulia, self-determination. Beautiful. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. <laughs> I really look forward to the day where we can see you live out in the world and get to experience your music fully. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much for um, working with us. With yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to. Um, oh. This. Oh, I'm on. Oh, OK. No, I just want to say thank you. I think I was muted. So now I'm unmuted. <laughs> Oh, yeah, happy Mother's Day, Teresa. Right? Oh, yeah, I'm so happy. Yes, I'm a grandma. I got, look at all these babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are taking pictures and coloring and stuff. Junior just heard us, but that's my oldest right there. Say hi, Junior. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to remind our viewers that um, this is the opportunity for you all to get to know Teresa and her platform. So this is a chance for you to ask her any questions that you have about um, 
anything that she thinks and problems that you see within our city that you want her to address, she's very adamant that she wants to know what's important to you. In fact, um, Teresa, you have something online on your website that's a oh, survey. Go ahead. Absolutely. So yeah. when we first started the campaign, a lot of people knew that I was a community organizer. And I knew that because of the organizing work that I did, that people would see me as an activist or a protester. And a lot of the activists and protesters I know are like lawyers, engineers, social service workers, you know, frontline people. Um, but still having that stigma meant to me that I needed to be determined to actually go out into the community to kind of get permission to run for office. So what I did was I started a survey that says what matters to you. And what we did was we put that out on our website and we used it in canvassing so that people could tell us what was important to them. And what we did was we used that information um, to kind of build and develop our people's platforms so that we can make some tangible um, and feasible alliances with communities so that we can see what democracy looks like. So one of the most important things for me in doing this series was not only to have your platform um, to speak to people about the importance of being engaged in the civic process so that we can see change happening in our communities, um, but also to educate me on what's important to you because with the work that I do, because it is intersectional, a lot of times I don't get to connect with people in our community because I'm trying to find ways to make it work better for us. But I'm, I'm good at that if I know what works, you know, and what doesn't work directly from us. So um, if you didn't mind, I just wanted to hear like, you know, what's important to you? What do you see happening in the world um, that you feel like, you know, making your vote count would make better or that you would, you know, like just what's important to you? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I feel like. I mean, first, love is important, you know, I feel like love is a big thing and, you know, coming from a place of love, you know, <sighs> that can mean a lot of different things, it's, you know, especially for the city of Portland and just, just the history of it, it, you know, it wasn't based on love, some of the things that occurred, you know, it wasn't, um, and a lot of people know that and a lot of people don't know that, you know, um, so I think also educating people on the history of this city is really important, a, a good starting point even. Like, mm -hmm. let's base it on love, you know, and let's base, base it on this history too. Like, and also reinventing, like, just reinventing the future. Like, just, you know, completely, you know, because we just got to know what, what happened here. You know, all the things with Van Port and, you know, all the things with like black it being illegal for black people to be here, you know, so, um, and uh, just a lot of, just uh, the gentrification, just all the history with involved the gang violence, just all the, all of it, just all of it that even did not even come from love, all, all of it that came from love and some of it that didn't come from love, you know, just the history, just this whole history. Um, but, so I want to see more of that happening, more, um, more true. I want more truth about Portland because people have this, you know, just rose colored view. Um, and it's just like, no, that's not even the case. That's, that's not, you know, we want truth. We want truth. That's love too. When we see the real thing, you know, it's coming from a place of love. So yeah, I feel like it's such, that's such a complex question, honestly. Um, but yeah, when I see like, First and foremost, when I see like just the amount of homeless people around, like, you know, that's just really heartbreaking. Like, you know, just having people on the street like that, not having what they need and searching, you know, and feeling, yeah, just uh, left out, you know. So um, telling the truth around that because. Portland won't uphold itself uh, if that continues going on. The city's going to break down. Like, you can't have that and also be, oh, yeah, we, uh, you know, we are liberal and stuff. You know, we won't, we, uh, we no, exactly. you're not. You're not progressive. We're so not. don't even try to play that. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a, we have to look at all the different stories that are going on within Portland to get that whole view. Um, so yeah, I, I want, I really want that address. Like, 
Yes. Yeah, it's affecting things energetically, like. Cause, and I was going to say that what you're saying, a lot of people that move here, they're like, whoa, what happened? Did I just move back in time? Did I walk back in time? And then the people that live here don't notice that anything is wrong. Mm -hmm. And what I heard from one of my friends that's a historian is like, uh, Teresa, have you ever thought that the people that are moving here actually do know the history and that they're moving here because they don't want to be bothered by having to be, you know, feeling guilty in America about, you know, their their, their color or their privilege. They just want to have that life. And she said, there are people that are like that, that are like, oh, I'm just going to go here because I don't want to live in the city anymore. I don't want to live in an urban area anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they're surprised when they get here. And then it's like, oh, how do I, you know, accommodate this situation? And mm -hmm. instead of us being neighbors, we're like this situation that needs to be accommodated. And it is a realistic systemic issue. It is an oppressive situation, but we have to look at America's history, we were built on, you know, genocide and people like ourselves, black people, we were, you know, stolen people brought into stolen land mm -hmm. and then utilized and um, exploited for labor. And even to this day, we have not come out of being commoditized. So you get away with that in places like Portland or the state mm -hmm. of Oregon, mm -hmm. where there's a social behavior that allows that type of second class citizenship to be um, perceived and treated and, and treated even in policy. Um, I'm always complaining about the the way that we're described, like at risk, marginalized, you know, uh, disadvantaged. Yeah. Now I'm like, wow, you will literally look at my skin and not ask anything about economic opportunities or my educational assets, but you'll already have in your mindset that I have a disadvantage and that I'm marginalized. And every system that is necessary to accommodate me because I'm brown. I have to go through that equity, but there's no true equity in it. The equity that I do see is like a return on investment mm -hmm. for even identifying another black person, which is again, a problem, which means I have a referral, which means I get paid for it, which means that's slavery, <laughs> which yeah. means inherently violent and vicious. And for people like yourself, children, you, you know, like for me to know that is happening um, I can't allow that to just be okay. I can't say get along with it or keep your job or, you know, I remember I, I you know, our, uh, it was a couple of generations ago and they were be basically being trained on how to accommodate that. And when I hear leaders talking about equity training and all that other stuff, I'm like, you're probably going to go into some of that old equity training that you've done before where you learn that hey, you have so much privilege, these people don't have it, and you have to learn how to get along with them. But the fact that we don't have privilege is not because we're ignorant mm -hmm. or we accommodate wanting to live in poverty or we're just inherently violent people. It's because uh, policy discriminates against us. Yeah. So your consciousness or your tolerance of people that policy has already mandated as unequal or dissatisfying for an opportunity. That is the problem and we have to remove that. And I'm glad that you use your art and your courage to identify and articulate that to your generation so that they're woke now and their expectation is to put a handle on it. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't have to continue protesting if we absolutely understand this process and we realize that it is not inherently just us, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah let's be honest and truthful, but let's be transparent as well. And when you talk about knowing our history, that's something that, you know, people are talking about, you're a preservation buff or you're looking back. You have to look back so you can identify what's happened so that that can be dismantled because even the application of language, words and how they're applied to us, those things mean a lot more than they appear on the record. And so knowing your history helps accommodate making that go away because people won't understand like a lot of times people don't know what I'm talking about and I understand that I used to work for an accountant yeah. and <laughs> we're like actuarials we literally want to fix things so that they're managed to be efficient but that's what I want to do for your future so yeah. I'm look I'm like ah. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly exactly I want to smash the system reconstruct it I don't believe in reforming something that um does not accommodate all of us in a way that is precious to our lives and our futures and so we have to reconstruct the systems that are in place right now mm -hmm. and I believe that the leaders that hold those systems up are not the same people that are going to be uh, courageous enough to do that work 
Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping me because I believe that your support is going to help me get elected. Yes. We'll be planning our inauguration. It'll be post COVID. We'll be strengthening our, you know, our allegiances and our alliances in our communities. Mm -hmm. And we'll start working together to build out that civic education so we can participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, absolutely. On the same page. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I want to, whatever you need, you know, like, <laughs> I'm there. Call, you know, hit me up, you know, anything. Yes. Um, also, just like, also talking more about these things because, you know, it's, this is a conversation that's going to go on forever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what it feels like. We can change what the future <laughs> looks like. We can change what the future looks like. Now that we know, that we can't trust that it's just going to change in time and that we have to just sit back and be cool with it. Liberation is the only way to go. And not, knowledge is liberation. The mm -hmm. more you know, the more you understand, that helps you pull things apart. That helps you strengthen your assertion to not be treated in mm -hmm. that way. That helps you get into a legal uh, system to litigate or mitigate those situations so that they never harm anyone else. Mm -hmm. And people know that's what we're coming for. Right now in the news, it's so funny because there's two news stories that's on my Facebook page. And one is about the city auditor having issues with the current mayor and Amanda Fritz, who I had run against before, not wanting to budget her to create auditing and oversight. And then the other one is about the next leader that's going to be our Secretary of State needing to mandate audits of bureaus and in our different counties and cities. So I, I know I'm on the right page. I'm not mad. I'm not going to just say we're going to do all these things when I know that I can't fix something that's messed up and I can't make it better until I see what's up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got it. Exactly. I like that. I like that. Yeah, the honest truth is not the, the, the fantasy. We're not living in a fantasy world anymore. No more broken promises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes! Teresa, <laughs> what <laughs> mayor? We had a comment from someone, just an observation from someone in the chat that was um, kind of summarizing what you were saying, Amenta, is um, maybe creating more of a care based society. Yeah, yes. and that's everything that you talk about, Teresa. It's it's about coming from that angle. When we talk about problems that we see, and you take it back to the root cause, it's about creating care for each other at that very crucial root place, which is about taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if you could speak more about that, and also just the importance of having someone come from that angle, be at the top, that can. Um, become an inspiration for the rest of us, you know, down here to look up to. Yes. Did you have a, any other things that you wanted to share with me? Because um, I'll wrap it into that. I'm um, Not at this precise moment. Okay. Um. Yeah, well, maybe I did have this question. It's just like, like, yeah, just like your sim, like, a, mm, just your vision. I mean, your your vision, like. And my vision is for us. Literally, when this the person who's asking the question about a more care focused um, agenda. One of the main things that I lead with is public safety. And you know how you said that love is the foundation for everything. Well, that's why I lead with public safety, because you don't want people to be harmed. And so if we're talking about housing, if we're talking about jobs, if we're talking about our environment, you know, if we're talking about crime and safety, we want to lead from love so that people that are literally living here as Portlanders um, realize that the city only benefits because the service to the people that we love is the work you know um i was talking to someone the other day about resources and you know social services and i was like the biggest and the most important resource that we're overlooking in all of the paradigms of making change happen is the people the people are the resource mm -hmm. it's not the money it's not the the privilege of, of research it's not quantifying something we already know it's engaging with people so that they know that they're necessary for our change, that we can't do it without each other. And that's why I don't mind 
you know, like going out knocking on doors before I ask for money, because guess what? If I'm asking you for money become, before I come and talk to you, I might be asking you for something that I don't, I don't need to receive. I mean, I might not, I don't feel like I've earned it unless I'm appropriating my, oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> unless I'm doing something for you, I don't believe that you owe me that investment to get you something out of it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't mind doing that work. And then when the city, I mean, the city knows what type of work I do right now and I don't get paid for it, but you can imagine just looking at our campaigns and the way that we took ours to a digital direction in the beginning, because we knew we weren't gonna be raising hundreds of thousands of dollars using the digital platform, going out into the community, sitting up in coffee shops, you know, going to the library meetups in everybody's neighborhood, um, putting all these different videos together so that we would have less of a carbon footprint in regards to what we're putting out for people to have access to our platform. Um, all of those things were mindful strategies that let us know that, hey, we're not going to spend. I mean, I had an opportunity to go for open and accountable elections and get matching funds. And I was like, I'm not going to spend time worrying about my levels of goals in fundraising. I'm a black woman in Portland. People don't trust us with money. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to donate to the causes. They want to take care of us. And I need to change that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and knock on doors. I'm going to go out here and talk to people. I'm going to find out what they want from us. And then I'm going to help them make me what I need to be to serve them. Like, tell me, give me a directive, because that's what I do. <laughs> so we'll build from that focus. And when you look at that people's platform, that's it. I told my daughter, because we got so many responses from what's, what matters to you, I said, we have to make a TikTok video with those. Because it's like so many responses that come through. And people, when they gave them to us and as they continue to give them to us, I said, as I run this platform, you're going to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. And as I run this city, you're going to know you're with me. Yeah. You know? Let's do this. Come here, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, the ain't listening to me. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Bring it, everybody. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Come on. But thank you so much for doing this for us today. Thank you for taking time from your family to be with us and right. to help us get the word out. And I'll have my, my campaign hit you up because um, it's mostly sharing the, world, the word. Um, we had some people that do professional campaigning and they said 78% of the people that vote hear the word from someone else. Mm. Someone they trust someone they care about, someone that tells them to use the ballot. And what we do know right now is the majority of people have ballots and some of them might not have thrown them into the mailbox yet. So, mm -hmm. time. <laughs> yeah, on that note, I just want to remind our viewers that your ballots need to be dropped off by May 19th or put in the mail by May 14th. And like Teresa was saying, your community, with your family, with your neighbors. We've got more shows coming up throughout the week. It's all below um, below this video. Uh, there's a whole lineup still left. We're only halfway through. So tell them to tune in to learn more about Teresa or share her website with someone. Also, if you want to donate, uh, there's a donate button beneath, um, or there's a website to go to beneath this video as well. Um, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see everyone back for um, Teresa as our mayor. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, I told Anna I'm already planning for the inauguration party because it's going to be like we our voting day, the election day is literally Dr. I mean, well, Malcolm X's birthday. <laughs> if that means anything about liberation and especially black liberation. But the, um, the inauguration is usually in January. And it's that first Monday after Dr. King's birthday. So oh, that's gonna be yeah. crazy, that first day after. So this is kind of like it's a journey because that's kind of my, my work anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm holding and, and, and depending on our ancestors. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they hold you up. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. This is special. Thank you. Thank you. Tell your mom happy Mother's Day. I surely will. I surely will. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>